All right. So last week you already we have discussed the different kinds of damages, and the acronym for the damages are is uh, mental, which stands for your mental. Um, we uh, which stands for uh, the word mental, which stands for moral damages, um, and uh, nominal, um, temperate, um, actual, and liquidated damages. So please don't forget uh, the different kinds of damages because that will be, um, you will learn from it as we progress on with the lesson. Now, let's start with Article 1171 for tonight. Uh, 1171 states that responsibility arising from fraud is demandable in all obligations. Any waiver of an action for future fraud is void. So what does this provision mean? So let's begin with dissecting first the different terminologies under 1171. So what do you mean by the concept of fraud? What is fraud? So it is the deliberate and or intentional evasion by the debtor of the normal compliance of his obligation. So literally it means non-performance or gusto niyo evade ang muhang obligasyon sa muhang creditor for what for what purpose ito mo chigo di ka gusto or you want to benefit out of it i don't know depende sa mo but it is the deliberate and intentional evasion of the compliance of your obligation what else waiver what do you mean by waiver it is the voluntary relinquishment or abandonment expressed or implied of a legal right or advantage, meaning when you waive your right, meaning you, ano, um, parang baliwala rin mo, for example, mag ka na, okay, I waive my right to, to, to this type of right. For example, uh, na mo school excursion, meaning ang school na i-program na kamo, i, um, ipa-travel mo to another location, Tapos, dito mo na mo lock by aral, like that. But you have to sign a waiver that the school will not be reliable for your safety. So let's say you sign that waiver. So you relinquish your right as to the obligation of the school to make you safe at all times. That is an example of your waiver. What else? If you if I can remember it correctly in kanang mga... Um, what do you call this? Kaning mga rides na involving mga roller coaster, may ngana, you have to sign a waiver there. Now, why? Because uh, kaning mga rides mga are very unpredictable. So for example, uh, na ay na ay guba ang imuhang unsa imuhang wala ka balo, if na ay guba ang imuhang ride. So dapat ang buhaton to protect the company magbutang og waiver, mag issue sila waiver sa mga passengers or sa mga participants ang ng ride na na. So, ginapasay yung nag-waiver kaya e para they will not be liable just in case something happens to the passengers. Now, rights may be waived unless the waiver is contrary to law, public order, public policy, morals, or good customs, or prejudicial to a third person with a right recognized by law. So, may, so may example na rights which cannot be waived. For example, your right to support. For example, you have a, a three-year-old son and you are separated from your partner. Of course, you cannot waive your right. You cannot waive the right of your child for support because support is um, valuable or vital for the best in terms of um, nurturing the best interests of the child. Here, when you say waiver, it is the relinquishment or abandonment of your right. Meaning, you let go ni mo yung right mo ng waiver. Now, 1171 refers to incidental fraud. Or, another term for your incidental fraud is dolo incidente. So, incidental fraud means fraud in the performance of the contract. Meaning, naanay evasion of the compliance of the obligation katung pag-perform na ni sa imuhang obligasyon and not in the actual making of the contract pa. 
So any deliberate deviation from the normal way of fulfilling the obligation may be a proper basis for claim of damages against the guilty party. Meaning, if someone deliberately intends to evade their obligation, they can be held liable for damages against the guilty party. Now, the law does not allow any waiver of any action for future fraud. Any such waiver is, to, is void. To allow such waiver will render the obligatory force of contracts illusory or nugatory. Ganuman. Let's say, si A is, let's say, si S is required to give B 10 sacks of rice. Uh, of a particular rice, let's say, class A na rice. Now, naingon si A sa iyang uh, kontrata na before before siya nag-perform sa obligation na nakalang sa con contract making pa lang sila, naingon si S. Pero ha, um, you will also sign a waiver B na kung na may mali or na may mistake or na may um, non-performance on my part sa kani kontrata na ni uh, mag hindi ko liable for damages sa that is ano that is forbidden because it is a waiver of future fraud o sa may ginaallow lang sa waiver what is allowed is yung previous fraud meaning nahuman na ang fraud nahuman na ang evasion or ang non intention to perform the obligation for example na ibal ana ni B na ang gideliver na sacks of rice kay dili dai class A na quality. So pwede siya mag-waive sa iyang right to file damages against S. Kay nakabalo naman siya because on his part, on the part of B, murag forgiveness na na sa iya ba? Na okay, sige. I will waive my right to institute a claim against you because of your fraud. Uh, I will uh, execute a waiver meaning I will no longer file a case against you. I will not you will not be liable for damages anymore because I forgive you. That is allowed. So, please remember under 1171, what is only allowed is um, waiver of previous fraud, meaning na human na ang, uh, na human na ang drama, na human na ang pro problema. But when it comes to future fraud, you cannot waive the future fraud because um, so kung ana naman di ay sampo mag-wave tao future fraud, then what is the purpose of your obligatory force between contracts, di ba? So ang mga parties to the contract, magsalik na lang na, ah, pwede mo natin mag-wave of future fraud, eh. that's, not, that's not performer obligation, di ba? So that is the reason why 1171 prohibits um, the waiver of future fraud. Any questions so far? None, sir. None. Okay. Right. Example. So, example, S promised to, del to deliver 120 cavans of rice of a particular brand and quality to be at the rate of 10 cavans a month. So that means in a year, dapat makahatag siya 120 and every month, 10 ang iyang i-deliver. Now, S cannot say that Agree with B, wherein B will not file an action in court against S should S commit fraud in the performance of obligation because this is a waiver of an action for future fraud. So that is void. So he cannot make such a such waiver because what he is trying to ask is waiver of future fraud. Now, is what am I ingana? B can still bring an action against S for damages just in case S. Um, commits fraud in the performance of his obligation. But let's say, again, no man na, si SK, wala siya nag-deliver 120 kabans. As a matter of fact, he just delivered 90 kabans of rice. So, uh, the non-performance, I mean, the intentional evasion of the performance here has already been committed. The fraud has already been committed. So, B already knows this. So, he can waive the right to file claims against S because he already knows it and this 
act of waiving such right is an act of forgiveness already on his part. So that is allowed. So nakuha ang what 1171 is trying to tell us. Hello? <laughs> nakuha ba? Yes, sir. All right, sige. Okay, let's move on to Article 1172. Responsibility arising from negligence in the performance of every kind of obligation is also demandable, but such liability may be regulated by the courts according to the circumstances. So, sir. So first, according to this um, law, the debtor is liable for damages resulting from his negligence. Tungod ka ikaw, debtor, nagdinanghag ka, tungod sa imong dinanghag, nag-incur o damage, nag-incur o injury, imuhang creditor, then you will be liable for damages. Bayra, tung imuhang creditor, tungod sa iyang injury. Now, doc, this is, um, number one, discretion of court to fix the amount of damages. So the court is given wide discretion, meaning nasa iyahang power, nasa iyahang uh, hawak niya, whether or not how much damages ang ihatag na i-award sa imuha. Fixing the measure of damages, the reason is because negligence is a question which must be necessary depend on the circumstances of each particular case. Now, damages where both parties are mutually negligent the fault of one may cancel or neutralize the negligence of the other. For example, both parties are negligent, meaning both parties are dilanghag sa ilang performance sa ilang obligation. Now, the fault of one will cancel or neutralize the negligence of the other. So, quitsra. Quitsra mong duha. Okay. Kamu dang duha na dilanghag man mo. Now, there are certain kinds of negligence according to Sources of obligation. First, you have your contractual negligence, uh, civil negligence, and criminal negligence. If you can remember in under 1156, diba, there are different sources of obligations. These are your contracts, basic contracts, law, delicts, and um, quasi delicts. So, Molisha, example, kung sa 1156, Mopo din siya ang source of obligation ni mo kay tungod sa imuhang uh, dinanghag na kay source of obligation which is to pay damages. Now what happens kung if you um, breach a contract? So kinahanglan ni mo mag pay og damages, right? So sa may source imuhang obligation to pay damages, ang kontrata based sa kontrata kay gi violate man nimo ang imong kontrata. Unsa ba? Tungod sa imuhang quasi-delic or civil negligence or culpa kiliana. Tungon sa imuhang pagka dinanghag, ang nahitabo kay um, na kay source of obligation. So tungon na makay culpa kiliana, which is the source of obligation, kinahanglan ni mong magbayad o danyo sa imuhang kalitor. Isa pa, criminal negligence. So for example, nakaligis ka o tao. So under the under criminal law, this is reckless imprudence resulting to, it could either be resulting to physical injuries or homicide, depende kung namatay siya, homicide, kung buhi siya, napiang, serious physical injuries. These are considered as um, as a criminal offense. So, tungod kay nakaligis ka na kay criminal na case. So, kanin criminal case mo ni muhang source of obligation as to why you should pay damages to the victim. So these are just sources of your obligation when it comes to negligence. So come on, when you become a future businessman, be careful. You should be wary na contracts are sources of obligations if you are negligent. Civil negligence Kaliana is a source of obligation if negligent mo sa performance in your obligation. And lastly, if you commit a crime, then 
such crime will be the source of your obligation to pay the victim for damages. So for example, in a contract, ano ha? So, in a contract, so this is contractual negligence or culpa contractual. As entered into a contract of sale with me to deliver a specific horse on a certain day. But the horse died through negligence of S before the delivery. So S here is liable to me for having failed to fulfill the existing obligation because of his negligence. So in a contract of sale, would I execute mo contract na ikaw mo baligya, mo deliver ka o horse can be, but tungo siya mong dilang hag, Na, na let's say ang napakaon ni mo sa kabayo kay let's say rat poison na namatay mo hang kabayo so wala nimo na deliver kambi ang kabayo so tungod wala nimo na deliver kambi ang kabayo then you are liable for damages because kabalo ka na naa kay existing contract of sale with B and tungod kay nagdinang ka ang imuhang contract of sale mo to ang source sa obligasyon nimo na mo bayad og danyos kang bi kay tungod nagpaka ka og feed sa horse nimo og rat poison so that is just an example nay pa buta na nay question or Kiri, as, naman ba ko tala? No. Wala. No, sir. Wala. Alright. Article 11.73. The fault or negligence of the obligor consists in the omission of that diligence which is required by the nature of the obligation and corresponds with the circumstances of the persons of the time and of the place when negligence shows bad faith. The provisions of Article 1171 and 2201 Paragraph 2 shall apply. If the law or contract does not state the diligence which is to be observed in the performance, that which is expected of a good father of a family shall be required. So, so my meaning is it. First, you have to know what is the meaning of fault or negligence. So in U.S. versus Marias, 23 Phil 44, the Supreme Court defined fault or negligence as follows. It is the failure to observe for the protection of the interests of another person that degree of care or precaution and vigilance which the circumstances justly demand, whereby such other person suffers injury. Meaning, because of your failure to exercise a certain care or precaution or vigilance, another person suffered injury. Kung sa imuhang kandilang hag, kung sa imuhang wala kay certain amount of care or precaution sa imuhang part, o hindi mga vigilante sa imuhang part sa mga dangers around you, Tungod aning mga butangan na ni, ang imuhang creditor nagka-incur og injury. So that is fault or negligence. Now again, in determining negligence, kay question of fact mag siya, you have to take a look at the different circumstances of each case. Now what are these factors that to be considered? You have there the nature of the obligation, circumstances of the person, circumstances of time, and circumstances of place. So, so my example and the nature of the obligation. So, for example, you are a truck driver sa isa ka shell na company and your job is to deliver uh, gasoline to different gasoline stations, di ba? Kunya ikaw kay sa imong katilang hag nag smoke ka sa sa within the vicinity of your uh, gas tank. So 
di ba? Ang nature sa imuhang trabaho or nature sa imuhang obligations supposed to be not to smoke. But then again, nag-smoke ka tuwod. Let's say, adik kang smoking ka na. So, nag-smoke, pag yun ka na, doon pag yun sa gas tank, di, what will happen if you are smoking within that vicinity? Mung explode bang yun ang unsa? Mung explode bang yun ang gas tank? And that is what? Lack of degree of care or vigilance on your part already. Apa? Circumstances of the person. For example, ikaw, um, guardia ka sa isa ka eskwelahan or let's say sa guardia ka sa isa ka bangko niya matipto ka na ako ikang tao. Pero, pagkagabi, natuog ka. Tungo sa imuhang tinanghag, natuog ka ang mga kawatan na kakuha sa bangko hinoon o kwarta. So, you will be held liable for that because of your negligence. What else? Circumstances of time. So, for example, ikaw nag-drive diha sa let's say, diha sa kasi yung pinakadulong na part sa patiin. I think that is somewhere unahan sa tagadao before reaching poblasyon. Di ba diha? Wag mag lights diha. So, for example, nag- nag-unsa ka, nag-drive ka o car, o wala ni Mugi on, ang imuhang uh, lights during night time. So, and then in that event, nakabangga ka isa ka tao, then you will be held liable for that because during night time, you should have turned on your uh, lights. But then again, you forgot to turn on your lights. So, because of your negligence, you will be held liable for the accident. Now, in circumstances of place, may um, example ani. For example, diya sa poblasyon mismo sa Katiil, nagpadagan kag sa Kenan or motor na 100 kilometers per hour. You are not supposed to uh, you are not supposed to magpadilit or magpadagan diha 100 kilometers per hour. Nakabalong mga kanadagan kay tao diha. Kung gusto ka magpadagan ng paspas, dito ka sa malibago na area kay kato kay maski wag padidit ka dito wag kay tao but then again because of your dinanghag because of your negligence you fail to exercise that degree of care you will be held liable for the accident if ever something happens when sa imong pagdrive diya sa katiil na poblasyon nakuha ang examples ani klaro man di ba yes sir all right So again, let's have another example. Has agreed to sell and deliver to me on a certain date 1,000 kilos of sugar of a certain quality for 30,000 pesos. So remember, ha? Si S, ano siya? Okay. Si S, maghatag ko kang B o sugar worth 1,000 kilos and of a certain quality for 30,000 pesos. Karon, Si B, nisugot siya sa sale. Kay namang ko siya yung plano na kanin iya hanggi palit na 1,000 kilos na sugar, ibalig niya po niya ni kang C for 35,000 pesos. So at least dahil siya ginan siya na 5,000, di ba? So kabalo si C, S, na si B, ibalig niya niya, i-resell niya ba? Kanin uh, sugar to C. But on the date designated, na mo-deliver si S o 1,000 kilos of sugar, si S wasn't able to deliver the sugar. So, ang naitabo, si C nagpangita o glaing uh, tao na makapalit siya sugar. In short, na one-an o capital o one o business opportunity si B. Now, the breach of the obligation by S resulting in the loss of the amount of 5,000 pesos as expected profit Hungered B. Kung mo siyang kalagot kang S kay wala niya gideliver ang 1,000 kilos of sugar na maka, imbis na makakinan siya kung na siya kasing gumil, siyang kalagot, nagka-heart attack siya. So, nag-hospitalize siya for 5 days. So, siya may tabo sa liability ni S. Let's say si S acted in good faith. Meaning, uh, Sir, ang reason nga nung wala na ako na deliver ang 1,000 kilos of sugar sa imuha, kay tungo na ako ang truck na guba. So, okay, sige, in good faith ka. So, you will only shoulder the amount of 5,000 pesos, which is supposed to be the profit of 
letter B of B. Now, if S acted in bad faith, meaning si S was very negligent in the performance of his um, obligation, yun na pakita yun, let's say in bad faith siya, let's say um, he forgot the date or he deliberately intended not to not let me earn the 5,000 pesos. Then, apart from the 5,000 pesos na profit ni B, S will also be liable for the hospitalization of B because momo ni Ang nag-originate ako, kanil mo ng reason nga nung uh, na na unso si B, na hospitalized. So, dapat mabayad po si S, ayah ha. So, B, which clearly originated from the beach, although they may not have contemplated the parties at the time they entered into the contract. So, although wala sa kontrata ni S o B na mubayad sa hospitalization expenses ni B, should something happen, but because S acted in bad faith in the performance of his obligation, then he should also be liable for the injury incurred by B, and that is the hospitalization expenses. So apart from the obligation of S to reimburse, or let's say, not reimburse, to pay B the, his expected amount of 5,000 pesos profit, S would still have to also to pay the injury incurred by B because the, that is the injury incurred um, after he failed to perform his obligation. Nakuha. Yes, sir. All right. Article 1174. Except in cases expressly specified by the law, when it is otherwise declared by stipulation, or when the nature of the obligation requires the assumption of this, no person shall be responsible for those events which could not be foreseen or which, though foreseen, were inevitable. So, this is the meaning of a fortuitous event. What is a fortuitous event? It is an event which cannot be foreseen or which, though foreseen, is inevitable. Meaning, an event that you didn't know 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 you cannot foresee love, but when it hits you, diba, you cannot escape it. Muragana, muragana pa. What a meaning sa fortuitous event. Now, say that otherwise, it is an event which is either impossible to foresee or impossible to avoid. Muna yun siya. Now, a fortuitous event may either be an act of man or an act of God. So, some of the acts of man, strictly speaking, for this event is an event independent of the will of the obligor, but not of other human wills. When you say independent of the will of the obligor, kanag debtor yun mismo, walay hawak ba? Walay yun hawak sa pangita mo. It is beyond his control. So an example of your acts of man, kay sabra na war, for example fire, it would spread a fire to other, let's say, other places, and robbery. Now, what's up for example, any acts of God? They refer to what is called force majeure, or those events which are totally independent of the will of every human being. When you say totally independent of the will of every human being, wag yung kapasidad ang human being na muhi mo ani. So, your example for this is your earthquake, flood, shipwreck, or eruption of a volcano. Saka naman, for example, S delivered to uh, S obliged to deliver B a carabao. So, kaya si S, sige, kaya para di ko ka deliver o uh, carabao kang B. Ako, ipa-erap ang volcano. Saka man yung pag-erap ang volcano, wag makay gahom, ana. Ginora may naing gahom, ana. So, di ba? It's an act of God. It is Totally independent of the will of a human being. Any question so far? Wala, sir. Wala. 
So, why do we need to know what is a fortuitous event? Because in our law, fortuitous events and force majeure are identical in so far as they exempt an obligor from liability. Both are independent of the will of the obligor. So, simple sabot ani. Meaning, if there is a fortuitous event, if there is a force majeure, this will exempt the obligor from performing his obligation. Or he will not incur liability because there is an act of unforeseen events, or if it is foreseen, it cannot be evaded. Now, for you as an obliger to claim that oh, I will not be held liable, huh? or I will not cannot perform my obligation because if for of a fortuitous event. Now, in order for you to claim that, you there must have to be these requisites to be present. Dapat naani sila in order for you to claim fortuitous event. So first, the event must be independent of the human will or at least of the debtor's will. Meaning, walay hawak ang tao o imuhang uh, debtor sa tumod aning event na ni. Second, the event could not be foreseen or if foreseen, it is inevitable. Meaning, it cannot be avoided kung naaman. Third, the event must be of such character as to render it impossible for the debtor to comply with his obligation in a normal manner. Again, the operative term here is impossible, not difficulty. So when you say you have difficulty of performing your obligation to deliver 20 sacks of rice to be is not an excuse for a fortuitous event. Because under fortuitous event, it has to be impossible. Impossible to na perform ako akong obligation. Kung kay usaba, usaba impossible obligation. Like for example, I cannot deliver to you this horse on that day because Bagyong Supang will arrive on that day. So how can I give that to you? Kitang tanan, mga palid tang tanan, di ba? <laughs> so, okay na kayo ba kung kinalang yun ako, i-deliver na ako ng horse mo kay para on sa exempt from liability. No, the, the, the laws specifically states that the event must be of such character as to render it impossible for the debt to comply with his obligation in a normal manner. Now, that is an example of impossibility. Now, lastly, the debtor must be free from any participation in or aggravation of the injury to the credit for that is there is no concurrent negligence on his part. Now, for you to claim fortuitous event, dapat a debtor is free from any participation of that event. Let's say, S is required to deliver a horse to B on February 20. But, um, let's say, uh, demand na ni B ang horse palang daan on February 18, but wala niya dala. So since na may participation si S of not delivering it an earlier date, then he cannot claim for a fortuitous event just in case something happens on February 20. Now, the rules as a liability in case of fortuitous event. As a rule, a person is not responsible for the loss or damage caused to another resulting from the non-performance of obligation due to fortuitous events. However, in an otherwise, in other words, his obligation is extinguished. However, there are exceptions. So, sa may pasabot, Ani, kung sa may mga exceptions or mga circumstances wherein even if there is a fortuitous event, your obligation still stands. Meaning, you still have to perform your obligation maski na a fortuitous event. So, first, it must be expressly provided by law. Second, when declared by stipulation, meaning both parties to the contract agree and it is placed into writing that even if there is a fortuitous event, the debtor will still have to perform his obligation therein. And lastly, when the nature of the obligation requires assumption of risk, meaning 
ikaw na mismo nag-ingon na, okay, sige lang, maski na ay fortitus event, maski na ay calamity, maski na ay earthquake or lindol niya or kanag tsunami, ako gaya pong i-deliver niya. Mahala na. So that is the example of your assumption of risk. Let's tackle each one. So when expressly provided by law, an example of that is Article 1263, which states that in an obligation to deliver a generic thing, the loss or destruction of anything of the same kind does not extinguish the obligation. So for example, S agreed to deliver to B a rice or corn or sugar on February 20. But on February 20, a strong storm hit the area, making, uh, making S unable to perform his obligation. Now, is, his obli is S obligation extinguished? Of course not. Remember, rice, corn, and sugar are generic things. When you say generic things, they can be replaced with another of the same kind. So S still has to deliver the rice, the corn, or the sugar even after the event has occurred or let's say after the storm, let's say on February 21, clear na, then he we can deliver the same thing or generic thing to B because of the principle genus never perishes. Genus nunquam perit. The one in your class Okay. So, what may apply to you sa business in your ani? When you become business, it uh, when you become what's up, karam? When you are already engaged in business, make sure na you engage with individuals who will um deliver to you generic things. Okay, para if there will be a fortuitous event, ang liability nila sa inyo ha, will still be continued or ang performance ng obligation magpadayon niya po. E para uh, di ni mawala ang inyohang um, kung ano eh, um, inyohang business interest over it. Another is when declared by stipulation. This is by virtue of the principle of freedom of contract. So such stipulation is usually intended to better protect the interest of the creditor and procure greater diligence on the part of the debtor in the fulfillment of his obligation. This is to make the debtor liable even in case of fortitude event. Such stipulation to that effect must be clearly expressed. So um, basically what this actually what this uh, provision means to us is that Gusto ni mo may mo liable ang imuhang debt o sa imuha, kinahang lang nakamutang sa kontrata na dapat liable gihapon siya even if there is a fortuitous event. So, therefore, in application to your course as business um, admin students, when you're engaged in business, dapat ibutang nyo sa kontrata na ang imuhang debt or liable gihapon siya. Mas kina ay earthquake, mas kina ay tsunami or let's say there is a crash of the economy, he still has to perform his obligation and he still has to perform his uh, obligation. And lastly, when the nature of the obligation requires the assumption of risk. So this is very common in the contract of insurance. So for example, CB insure niya ihang malay against fire for 100,000 pesos with C, which is an insurance company. So let's say C, C is from uh, a representative from an insurance um, company. So the C, B, uh, C, can I have a policy for my house against fire? I will pay 100,000 pesos for that policy. So yun, na na insurance contract. Now, the house of B, was destroyed due to accidental fire. So let's say, the balay. Although the cause of the loss is a fortuitous event, let's say, accidental fire, diba? This, that is, although it could be foreseen, it is inevitable. So it is a fortuitous event. 
So dapat So dapat diba hindi ba himong liable ay muhag letter but because of the assumption of risk B can still recover the damages he incurred by the fire through the act of C of which he assumed the risk of paying B 100,000 pesos. Now, in a contract of insurance, the insurer, si C, in consideration of the premium paid of 100,000 pesos by the insured, undertakes to indemnify the latter for the loss of the thing insured by reason of the parent insured against even if the cause of the loss is a fortuitous event. So, mauli siya ang um, gamit sa to ang mga insurance companies. Katungod sila ang nag assume sa risk na if there will be a fortuitous event, then ayaw ka malaka because we will be there for you to pay for your losses. Usama ba? An example of this is, my, actually I have a car insurance. So si Bako Palayo, kanil ako ang sakyanan, mapalid sa bagyong I don't know, kung sa mga bagyo na mo, mo, mo padool din sa ito ang bukid, then, although it is a 42 event, then my car insurance company will still pay me a brand new car to that effect. Because, yun nga, uh, my car is insured, meaning, she will pay for it, they will assume the risk if something happens to it. So, claro ato ang different kinds of circumstances we're in. Uh, liability will still incur despite the presence of fortuitous event? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, so that ends our, our uh, lesson for today. We might end on the first chapter, which is Nature and Effect of Obligations by Wednesday. Okay, para by next week, we will start on the different kinds of obligations. This will be a, a different set of lessons. All right. So we will not be meeting on Friday because it is a holiday. February 25 is declared a holiday. So I'll see you on Wednesday and finish nature and effect of obligations. So before we end, do you have any questions? None so far, sir. Sure, did both.